Can we make old into new again? Well, let's see about that. Welcome back to the Golf Shop, Jim McCleary, and we are doing an old to new concept. And what I was given by Connor is a set of FG62s. FG62s. FG62s are circa 2010. What was happening in 2010? Let's Google it and quit looking up. Well, let's see. Spain won the World Cup in South Africa. The Olympics were held in Vancouver. The new tallest building in the world was uh, opened in Dubai. And we had, the U.S. had the deep water accident where they lost a lot of oil in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. Amongst a whole lot of other things, staying away from the political nonsense. But, the, but all in all, not a bad time in the world. And one of the things that probably went unnoticed was this guy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. All right, obviously it's a Wilson staff blade, right? And what had happened was is that it, it was a kind of a departure from your normal blade in that butter knife top, butter knife sole, uh, big muscle in the back, and, and trying to get into some sweeping lines and that's what you get, right? And so what they did is they widened the sole. It went from narrow to wide to the toe. I believe that was probably a design orientation to people, uh, people from uh, flipping it. And they also talked about how gentle, uh, gentle the leading edge was to prevent diggers. Well, I'm here to tell you, in, compared to today's thing, this is a knife edge. <laughs> so it just only goes to show you that, you know, of the differences, that was, you know, not more than what, 11, 11 years ago? So we got a, so Connor, we did a fitting for Connor, and it turns out he really liked the Wilson CBs. However, he's been a Wilson fan, and there's some emotional value attached to these. So we are going to do our best to make them better than they were and, and put the shafts that we found that will fit in there. So after we did a fitting with Connor, we found out that he really gravitated towards the KBS Tour model. He's a younger guy, played some competitive golf while he was in high school and some of college, I believe. And he's getting back into it now that he's got, you know, life situated again. And he wants to try these out. Now the other part is lefty. So you know I'm digging on this one. <laughs> Connor, I might have to hit this when we're all done. Uh, so... What do we got to do? Well, number one, we know they're taper tip because I was in there, but if you can just see in there, see all that goo that's in there? So we're going to have to go through that. I did a quick inspection on them, and they're actually quite a decent shape, honestly. I mean, they've obviously been used, but they all have a level of the goo that we're going to have to take out, and some of, some of them have a weight in the bottom, and we're going to have to take those things out. So once we, start, once we do that, then it's back into... I'm going to run them over top of the... Uh, the glands watch to kind of polish them out, take some of the some of the lighter bumps out, and make them a little shinier, and then we're going to start doing some assembly. So let's go over here, and we're just going to start cleaning stuff out. Trick of the trade, boys and girls. Heat is the key to moving this glue and the excess epoxy that you see in there. Now it's great to have two drills, one with a drill bit and then one with a hosel brush and that makes time smaller. However, you can use one for both. So you heat up the outside, then the inside, drill out the bottom because in every application you're going to find that extra epoxy down at the bottom and that's what we're trying to get rid of. Then you use the wire brush and you just clean it out the entire way tap out the excess and then make sure that you have a super duper clean hosel because that's the important part for bonding when we go to do the assembly. Now let's see how long it's going to take me to do the rest of these clubs.
Now that we have the hosels taken care of on the inside, we need to take care of the head on the outside. As you guys can tell, this is a chrome head. And chrome takes a lot of punishment, even though it's from the 2010, you know, and this goes back into the 70s. Now, when you want to lean onto this to give it a high polish, you see where I'm going back and forth. If some, for some reason, it's really not that perfect, what I use is a citra wheel with some black rouge and just really lean on it, and that really tends to smooth it out. Then I'll come back to this and I will use the glands wetch on this particular unstitched wheel. Now, we have to pay attention to basically every piece and part of this particular head. You have the back, you have the sole, you have the toe, you have the hosel area. And what I'd like trying to do is a cross hatching method. As you see, I'm going across where I can really lay into it. And then you go up and down, which is 90 degrees from the original path. And that really puts the extra shine on it, works a few kinks out of it, and gives it that luster that, you know, we like to see in a new set of clubs. So let's go check this out. Now, if you want to pass this up, I'm right around the 10 minute mark if you want to just move up to that particular point. Now that we have all the components measured and everything's clean ready to go it's time to put them together now what I've done is I've weighed out all the pieces parts everything is in line from the from the lightest to the heaviest none of the iron heads really needed anything extra which was kind of unique particularly for something that was from 2010 now I'm going to be using taper tips, so frequency matching is only going to be able to change if you do a hard or a soft step. But Connor is a very strong individual, and so we're just going to leave it the way that it is. So now I've already done the, the spinal lining, and I've already marked the shaft. So now at this particular point, what I'm doing is I'm using the fishing line to keep the head on the shaft. I'm marking my length. I'm putting it into the frequency machine to check the flex on it and I'm using my brand spanking new chart here and then what I'll do is I'll put on the the new laser clip and put it on here as you guys have seen in the past when I did my frequency machine review that now I don't have to switch it around I can just use it right on top of this then I do my flowing and then I take it out mark it and then set it and we just go right to the next one now that's a, that's basically the assembly phase or at least the getting ready to do the assembly phase and then we were not we won't be showing you but we're going to braid the tip i'm going to use my my new epoxy glue that i've been using and and we'll go right on to the next part which is the cleaning up of it so if you want to see me do some more attaching more flowing more seeing of the laser light that's fine or you can go to right around 1310 to where we talk about what we do after the glue is dry
right, it's the next day and it's into the afternoon and I just finished my live stream. Did I mention I do a live stream? Every Monday, 1730 Eastern time. All right. <laughs> Self promo there. And, and, and we talked about the Wilsons. All right. So you, you, we saw how I got them flowed, gluing them together. I've shown you in other videos and we finished the ferrules and we've got them looking like that. Not bad, not bad at all. So we've got them polished. And you can see I've left a, a print there. Give me a minute. There you go, look like that. <laughs> and we got them polished up. We've got the ferrules done and we've got the shafts oriented the way we want and we've got them cut. We've got them cut down. Now all we need is the grip. It seems with the COVID going on that the supply chains for not only shafts but grips is being impacted greatly. We really need to work on that. So we've uh, changed the types of grips. So we're going to put the grip on here in a little bit. However, I have to say they do look really, really nice. And so when we're going to put the grips on, we'll probably do a couple of test hits and then we will call it even. So when you're, when you're putting these clubs together, when you're putting any club together, a couple of things you really, really want to concentrate on. All right, fit and finish, fit and finish. What do I mean by the fit and finish? Well, number one is when you, you see when I'm measuring, I'm flowing and all that stuff, that's the fit part. Whether, you know, I'm checking the, the flex to make sure that it's not out of whack. I'm putting the orientation into the club the way I like it. And then we are sanding down the tips to make sure that the glue will stick to the inside of the clean hosel, which we did show you that. And then when we go to fit them, we make sure that it's a nice tight fit. Then we let them dry. And then, then it's a finish part of it. And the finish is finishing the ferrule so they look nice, give them a polish, making sure there's no deep dark scratches on the brandy new shafts that we have, taking a look over at the clubs. And then finally, we're gonna put the grips on, do a loft and light check, and then they should be good to go. So if you have any questions, put them down in the show notes like that, and uh, then let's put on some grips. So we finally got the Wilson FG62s put together, and we had to wait on the grips to show up because the grip population apparently is getting fairly demanding or scarce or both, whatever you want to call it. And we like the way that they turned out, right? They, we got them a, a nice little shine happening, right? Even though they are, you know, 18 years old. And as we found out that the, the loft and the lie angles, the lie angles are off pretty good, so we bent those the way they were supposed to. And the loft angles, just a few needed a little tweak, nothing bad, but they were what we would call new classic, well, lofts, right? They'd be classic lofts where the five iron is 27. Oh no, 27, right? If you had 27, oh my God, they're gonna hit short. Well, that was, the, that was basically the loft of the time frame. These would be considered players clubs now, right? Or maybe even not that, they might even be too weak. So we ended up with the KBS 120S, which we've told you in the past. Good shaft, right? It's a good, it's a good solid shaft, not very harsh. It gets the ball up in the air, worked very, very well for Connor. Uh, we ended up going with the Golf Pride, basically the, the Tour Velvet Cord, basically BCTs. And the BCTs are a little softer in their, in their texture, if you can say a cord grip is soft, but it's a little softer than, say, a tour velvet cord. They tend to get a little harder. And he said he's played those in the past, and since those were available, we were going to go with those. And I think they went together very, very well. The, once we got everything cleaned out, all the stuff went in there very, very well. So again, guys, go get fit. Make sure that the clubs that you got underneath of you are the ones that are for you. Although Connor didn't go with the CBs, he's, uh, he's good in the transmission and the grip, and maybe one day we'll change him out into something else. However, these are left-handed. So I gave Connor a call and I said, hey, you mind if I hit these? And he says, no, go on ahead. So we're gonna.
So again, guys, <clears throat> if you got any questions on, you know, club repair, you get something where you might be outside of your depth, just give us a call or email at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com, clubmaker at mcgolf.net, and we'll help you out. And, uh, and just, as usual, let's see your scores go low. Now, if you would, there's going to be some stuff popping up over here, you know, subscribe, which we really, really want you to do. And then maybe another note, say right about there, where they're going to give you some more club making, club review type stuff from the channel.